Okay, I'm going to go through three common proof texts that Trinitarians try to use to prove their pagan Catholic Trinity. And these scriptures, you'll see them pull out quite a lot. And I'm going to show you how these scriptures actually prove the biblical Godhead and actually refute the pagan polytheistic three-god trinity. Okay? First one is Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26. It says, And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. And you'll say, see, it says, make, Let us make man in our image, plural. Now that is true. There is separation in the Godhead. But notice how it says, Our image, singular. Not our image is, plural. There's one image. God is one person, not three persons, as the Trinitarians claim. And of course, they'll lie and say, oh, you're a modalist, that kind of thing. Modalism is basically, modalists, they don't believe in separation. They don't believe in there's distinction in the Godhead. They say that God has three modes and that he just changes the modes. That's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches there is separation in the Godhead. We see that at the baptism of Jesus in Matthew chapter 3, verse 16 to 17. The Godhead can't separate but they're one person, they're not three persons that are somehow one God, but you know, it's, it's heresy, this trinity. So, again, there is separation, but it's our image, singular, not our image is, plural. Okay. Next verse is Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. You hear this one pulled out quite a lot as well. Matthew 28, 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Again, you see the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, but notice how you see the name singular of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, not the names plural of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. It's one name. Again, God is one person. You don't see a plurality of names or a plurality of images. It's singular name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. So again, it proves the biblical Godhead. It actually does not... It actually refutes the pagan three-god trinity. And of course, the most common one they'll try to use is 1 John 5.7. Okay, sorry about that, just had a little interruption there. But 1 John 5.7 is the common one they'll try to use. And it says, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. And I'll say, see, there's three in heaven. Okay, again, notice what the verse says. These three are one. Okay, notice how it does not say these three persons are one. It just says these three are one. Again, Deuteronomy 6, 4. You know, the Lord your God is one Lord. Okay, not three persons, one. Okay, so again, 1 John 5, 7, like the other two verses, proves the biblical Godhead. That God is one person. You have the image singular, name of singular, and these three are one, not these three persons are one. So it's ironic how all three of the main proof texts that the Trinitarian pagans try to use actually prove the biblical Godhead and refute the pagan three-god trinity. So don't be deceived by this Trinitarian uh, Satanism, and it is Satanic, because the Trini there, there's going to be a Satanic trinity in the time of Jacob's trouble. So, which is Satan, uh, the false prophet, and the Antichrist. You know, we're not going to get too much into that. But the Trinity is paganism. It comes from occultism. It's totally satanic. So don't be deceived. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.